Hey everybody. So I'm looking for my glasses. <laughs> so as I commented, I'm by myself today. So we'll see how this goes. Last week, we went an hour and 45 minutes. So we'll see what I can do by myself. It's always good though to have a prop. Sometimes Jimmy's the prop. Sometimes Patrick's the prop or Michaela. <laughs> but anyhow, I have the usual that I want to start with. Um, and that is the uh, just to say thank you to all the YouTube uh, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you've looked at some of the comments on the YouTube channel, you'll see uh, how this is very helpful for people who are learning the trade and even people who are advanced in the trade or thinking about opening up their own upholstery shop. So check it out. Um, I hope that you enjoy it. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, the Facebook forum is doing wonderfully, and I'll get to I'll get to uh, some of the things that were posted. We're getting to really some light, nice, lively um, action on that, and we're really happy about that. So uh, last week, um, so Jimmy Jimmy uh, said he wasn't feeling well, so he wasn't coming in. I do believe him. But last week, uh, uh, we did say to Jimmy, we we're just kidding that uh, somebody had posted on the Facebook forum about extreme ironing. And so we said, well, that could translate pretty good to extreme upholstering. So uh, I was kidding with Jimmy that I will meet him at the New England Aquarium with his scuba gear and his wing chair to start the first class. I hope that he didn't think I was serious. I told Patrick that maybe we should start with Jimmy with the trampoline on a slip seat rather than a wing chair underneath uh, with the sharks, you know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Jimmy just wasn't feeling well, but traveling, so here I am by myself. So if you guys could comment, that would be great. Um, are you all dug out from the snow? Randy says, wow, we got hit hard. Now, we I'm about 24 miles outside of Boston, so we didn't get hit as hard as Boston did. But Boston really got, really got nailed. And I want to say hello to SG. Good, e good evening. Thank you. Um, so I might re be relying on your comments, too, to fill in where Jimmy and Patrick and Michaela would fill in. So, yeah, right to, uh, so I think I covered all, all of what I wanted to talk about. Oh, the online classes. We're getting a lot of good feedback from the online classes. So if you haven't checked out the online classes, you should. If you want to start small, that's fine. I mean, some people... Um, at one class and I think they find out that they like it and become subscribers. Uh, so just test the waters. If you've looked at other upholstery channels, I think we are different. I think my teaching experience makes us different and I think our format makes us different. And I have a wing chair behind me that I'm gonna talk about. Um, and you'll probably, if you've seen the online classes, you've seen me by myself describing this. Um, I'm going to miss out and giving you information. It's not done on purpose. It's just that, you know, we get so mechanical in our uh, application or our, our trades that sometimes we forget what we've learned. And the apprentice, meaning Jimmy uh, or Michelle, she and he remind me of, uh, you know, <laughs> that, that, you know, I have to translate that information. And the online classes, I think, I think we do translate that information really well. So there's another comment by Doc. Monday afternoon, I would uh, care to learn more. What would a newbie like me have learned? Um, well, I think you should definitely enjoy the free YouTube channel. I mean, start with the free stuff. Why not? I would do the same thing. Just test the waters. Get yourself a small side chair. See, see how you like. Uh, see how you like that. And we have all the resources beyond that. We have the online classes, which are paid classes, and we have the store where you can buy supplies and tools. I will tell you to be be patient with the delivery times on that because we are we are a small company, and sometimes you know we're not Amazon. We don't have people working overnight in a warehouse, so. It does take some t a little bit longer to, to get, but what you're getting are the good supplies. And I think, Dominic, that would probably be for somebody a little bit, I'm not sure if you're new, so it's not like that with buying all the equipment. We, we have uh, Daphne, who's been really good about um, patronizing our, our store, and she's actually interested in one of the stable guns that we have, I think. But... Um, She's been a good patron. Um, I think that that's somebody uh, that's just taking her time and just failing it, failing it out. And she's not she's not going in and buying everything up. 
and she's just buying the proper tools and supplies, which you can get through my website at Upholstery on Broadway. So check that out um, for all you people who want to advance their skill, actually. So uh, that's good. And somebody did buy. Um, we're really excited because it's a little pricey for, for my store. It's the fundamentals of upholstery, the whole kit. And I hope that who, whoever bought that is going to enjoy that. Uh, that's one of the things that takes a little bit more time. So if they're watching, I can't remember their name, but if you're watching, just be a little patient with me on that because there's a lot of components put together on that. I have to put them. I don't have them in stock to put them together. Someday I'd love to be able to have all this stuff in stock and get it out faster. But that's primarily what my what my difficulty is now is that I don't have upholstery sitting in the corner. So when that comes, I think you're going to hope that you um, – are going to teach. I mean, I think I, I developed this. You get the electronic, uh, you get the electronic file for the for the book, and you could get the hard copy. I think I can't ask Patrick because he's not here, but definitely the electronic comes with the, with the full package. And I think you could buy this separately too at the store, Upholstery on Broadway. So this is a this is a, a book that I I wrote and developed. Uh, it's a basic book, um, but it's also, I had in mind when I did this, when the fundamentals of upholstery, I had in mind that somebody um, who's been upholstering a little bit, like some of our students on the Facebook, um, or Randy, or somebody, would would uh, teach this in an adult ed class. Um, you know, I think it's like, last I looked, I think it's like $500 for the whole thing, but you get the, you get the supplies, you get the ottoman, you get the instructions, you get the video, you get, you get everything. So um, I think you could turn that around. If, if you have a shop and you want to expand your business, there's nothing better than being the upholster, the only upholsterer in the region that teaches at the local high school. Um, that puts you above everybody else. Randy, I'm talking to you, man. I think you should do it. I think we've talked about or just Pamela's here. I haven't. I, I'm not sure if Pamela, if we've t if Pamela has been on lately, uh, but I know she's busy, and she's producing some really wonderful stuff. She says hi, everyone, and Helen. Now, see if you're gonna forgive me because Patrick usually reads the comments, so I'm not sure about. Um, you know, Pamela might be on every week for all I know, and Patrick just doesn't tell me. Uh, so Pamela, hello. I say hello to um, Helen. She says good evening. Please, would you confirm what would you do? Um, when you would do a four-way tie and and when would you do it an eight-way tie? That's a really good question, Helen. Four-way ties I usually just do on back on the backs of sofas that have the lightweight springs. Eight-way tie always on the seats, which are a heavy gauge spring and takes a lot more abuse. Now, some upholsters do the eight-way tie in the backs, so you might be wondering, why, why don't you just do an eight-way tie in the back? I think it's a little overkill on back springs because you don't have the weight the force that you do on the seat. But that's an excellent question, uh, very intuitive. So let's let's go now to um, our, let's start with the YouTube, okay? Um, so Gwendolyn, she uh, is commenting on um, the OnCap video I did. She said, thank you for this. I've been wanting to make OnCaps for my sofa and watching this video, I realized that I've been overthinking the process entirely and you have simplified this greatly. I'm glad she, she commented in this fashion because, um, you know, I don't know if you guys realize that I taught in a, for four years, I taught in a uh, shop that was a work training shop for people with um, major disabilities. So what it taught me was I had to break down the steps and uh, um, really in a way that um, some some for some folks more than others, but it really taught me to slow down a little bit and trying to break the steps down. Also, like I said, the apprentice, Jimmy and Michelle also, and my teaching in adult ed has it taught me with all the different learning styles that are out there, has taught me to slow down a little bit and try to break it out a little bit. Um, I know that some upholsters watch this and they go, you know, this guy's redundant or whatever. I don't know why another upholster would watch me anyhow except to learn. Uh, but but um, it's a teaching. It, I'm trying to appeal. I'm trying to reach abroad. Um, what I know is the, all the learning learning styles that are out there. So I'm glad uh, she picked up on that. And I know that 
The other person um, is Janine, who, who really picked up on that because I think she was a teacher. I think teachers, um, I think what you're trying to do is, is just reach every single person that walks, in my case, we were, you know, teaching in my shop or at the school that I was teaching at night, every person that walks in uh, with different projects too, by the way, it's not just, you're not going by a textbook and teaching out of a textbook with the learning styles. You're teaching with the learn different learning styles and a different pieces of furniture. Let me tell you, it's a little challenging, but it's fun. If you guys have any, of being a teacher um, and you're an upholsterer, I would highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of energy. I wouldn't fool you. Let's catch up. We have another, another. I have to be careful with these comments now because you never know. Scarecrow, I uh, just want to say thanks for your videos. I'm a total amateur and I was able to replace the horrible springs and wood wool in my dining room chairs with jute webbing and foam. Very good. I mean, you could change out springs. Sometimes, sometimes a piece warrants it, you know, especially if they're zigzag springs. He didn't say if it was a zigzag spring, um, but sometimes I always change the zigzag springs. I don't like them. I've never used them. I, I think they really damage a frame and I just don't use them. Um, so we, we're getting silver. Silver Bell says hello. Hello to Silver Bell. So I'm doing by myself. I like I said in my comment last week we went an hour and 45 minutes which is the most we ever did i just hope that if you if you're tuning in just to get information that the well, last week <laughs> forgive us we, we do get a little off track but we like we have the questions and answer segments and um we hope though that you can find enough if you're just tuning in for upholstery that you're getting you know um, now, what's funny is on the online classes, it's it's really different. And once in a while, <laughs> we break, we we kind of break that, and we think we're in a question and answer, Jimmy, and especially Jimmy, Jimmy and I. And I have to kind of like remind them and remind myself, no, wait a minute, people are paying for this. So we need to be a little bit more serious. <laughs> um, you know, we don't want people saying this guy's a goofball. You can't say 100% goofball, right? Um, Deborah says, hello from Idaho. Hello. I knew a very good upholsterer from Idaho. He, this guy was really good. Um, really good, really good upholsterer. Uh, Deborah says, it was a fun show last week. Well, thank you. <laughs> we don't know. Uh, Jimmy, I, I think I wore Jimmy out last week because he couldn't come. He wasn't feeling well today. <laughs> we hope that he feels better. Something wrong with your sound. Uh-oh. This is one of the things that, can you hear me? You guys hear me? I'll wait for somebody to comment. Maybe not because, uh oh. Um, I don't know how to do this. I hope I can do this. It keeps dropping in and out the audio. Okay. It could be the it could be just the the storm. Uh, if you say, tell me, Andy, uh, how often do you hear me, and how often do you not hear me? Is it just intermittent? Is it is it like every second? Okay, all right, good. Maybe that what I just did. I just uh, just tightened up a couple of things in the back, so just bear with me. Hopefully, I'll have some visuals for you guys. Yes, can hear you. Randy says yes, but I think. Your connection is lagging. Yeah. So it, it could be um, the storm. We got really pelted. Boston 20th century coastline of Massachusetts really got hammered um, along Nashville. I don't know if you guys are familiar with, with Massachusetts, but we have a North Shore, we have a South Shore, and we have Boston in the middle pretty much. The North Shore got really hit hard. Boston got hit hard, and the South Shore got hit hard. Intermittent. Well, I don't know if I can fix it. I think it's a system thing, like SG says. So we'll just we'll just go with it. Sorry about that. Hope you guys can read lips. A robot voice. Okay. <laughs> well, at least you can hear me. Um, so let's go to the next one, which is uh, fixing a pop button for free. So we have this video on. We did two videos with the pop button. One with the really the proper tools like the German needle, 
I think Randy calls it something else. It looks like a syringe. It's it's professional. And we also did one with using home tune tools because we understand that a lot of people who tune into YouTube don't have the, the right tools and they don't want to buy the kit if they just have one pop button. Deborah's here. I can't hear anything, but it sounds like you are chopping wood. Sorry about that. And uh, Jane is from the UK. She says, hi, Jane. Hi, everyone from the UK. Thanks a lot. I, I'm sorry about the sound. So if you're just coming in, I'm by myself today, and I am not the savvy tech guy that my son is. My son is the genius behind all of this, behind the online classes and the YouTube and these questions and answers. So he's not here. He's not available. So we're in a little bit of trouble. I'm just going to go with it, though. And hope that um, you guys get something out of it. I'm sorry. I mean, you can always um, comment, and I could try to answer on the comment. I guess that's what I can do. If you guys can't hear me, I know I'm. I, I'm pretty sure it's a system. It, it's it's a system thing, not not the computer. It's it's something. See, Randy, you know that I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to this. I do know what I'm talking about with the upholstery. So. But I need to know if if we can't hear, if you can't hear me, I think moving forward, I don't know if it's worth showing you the link chat, but we'll see. Let's just let's keep going with the um, YouTube. So the next one is how to upholster the outside back of a tufted chair. Um, that, that they said, that's very helpful. Thank you so much. So kind of you to share the upholstery hack. That's good. And then Eli says, uh, can something else be used than cotton? You know, people, batting is a big mystery and a big, big thing in upholstery. And people just aren't sure. You know, it's like giving somebody all these ingredients to make a cake that never made a cake before. It's like that in upholstery, right? Um, so um, I think when you, I think it's easy to break down batting into two categories. One would be soft batting. One would be hard batting. Um, so, Randy, what do you think? Um, can, are you getting what I'm saying now about batting? Tell me if – tell me, because um, we're having a little trouble, system trouble. Can you tell me how much you're hearing from what I'm saying about batting? I'm, I'm about to explain the two different soft batting and hard batting. Are you understanding what I'm saying or, or hearing? How much are you hearing? You could let me know. And okay, so the next one is how to upholster. This is one of the most popular. I'm waiting for Randy or somebody to let me know. Um, are you hearing every other word? Are you hearing every other fourth word or tenth word? Or because I'm not sure if we should just continue if 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 it's that bad. If it, if it's that bad, there's no point in this. I don't think. Okay, hearing most of it now. Hearing everything, great. Thank you, Randy. Uh, SG says, Kevin, if I were if I were to tough button with um, horsehair stuffing rather than foam, how would it be done? Uh, what would the buttons be attached? I have to tell you, the only way to do the proper diamond tufting, first of all, you don't do it on a seat or an ottoman. That's a no-no. The only time, thank you, Jane and Deborah, it's fixed now. Well, I didn't do it. It fixed itself. <laughs> and I know Patrick didn't do it because Patrick's not here. Uh, but this is a really good question by SG. And so uh, what you have to remember is that tufting was developed with mainly um, Victorian furniture. And uh, Victorian furniture, you know, you're looking at 1860s, um, not American. Yeah, American, Victorian, and earlier. Um, the choices, the reason it was developed on backs and arms, the reason it was not inside back, inside arms, not outside arms, not outside backs, not seats, is because fabrics, you had very few options for fabric. I mean, really, when you think about it, in, in upholstery infancy, you had um, horsehair fabrics. I think you might have had wools. You might have had linens. Really basic, though, colors and, and textures. 
one of the big innovations that came out on horse fabric looked like, you know, strands of horse hair is what it was. But one of the big developments in one of the early horse hair with diamond shapes in it, right? So all of those fabrics were bland. So the upholsterer years in, the, in that era, they were tasked with making something beautiful, making it more beautiful, right? And, and the way uh, upholsterers started to develop the tufting and, and they tested it out, it was the best batting. Of course, I, let me get to that batting in a minute, that batting question. But the best batting for tufting is horsehair, period. Period. I mean, it, it it can't be too soft. Foam is way too soft to get a proper pleat on a, a diamond pleat, especially now. I've done I've done furniture where I've talked it to the customer and it, it was a manufactured piece and the back is upholstered and the, usually the tufts a lot larger. I don't want three inch tufting on those Victorian things. We've all seen those. So um, I say, well, this is a soft tufting. Anytime somebody has a foam tufted piece, I always caution them. I say, I'm going to do it for you, but this but you have to remember this is a soft pleat. What's a soft pleat? Well, a soft pleat is a pleat that might roll. Might It might even pleat out is what we call it uh, from button to button. You, there's no way on a soft back that you're going to get the same tufted look that you get with the like a horse hair back. So the question is, how do I go about that? Well, you want to make sure that you have um, at least three inches of horse hair and, and it's padded down. And then you have to use muslin. And then what you do is you, you, you take your finger and make holes, right? And then you, you, take, um, the, you take a needle. I take a needle and run, <clears throat> before I do my fabric, I'll run a twine through the muslin to get that, to get that hole just the way I want it. And it really should be, the button should be really tucked in. That's what gives you the def definition. And see how the art comes in, you guys? This is real, you know, I don't usually get into this with all the distractions I have, but I get excited because when you do a diamond tufting, it's called a diamond tufting. It really is pretty. It, you have to get it to recess though. And it has to be somewhat firm. It has to be somewhat firm. Remember that. You are not gonna get the same look out of something that's soft. Getting back to the batting and that question about batting. So two categories of batting, hard batting and soft batting, right? Soft batting should never be used in the first stages and um, only in the last stages of upholstery, almost before the fabric is put on and, and hard shouldn't be used on the top. Does that make sense, right? But you know, I was thinking about this today. <laughs> Isn't it true that a spring is batting in some ways? Maybe not. I don't know. But, uh, you know, there's, there's all these different components that can be used just like a good recipe, right? <coughs> these are good questions, really good questions, and I appreciate it. Really good So let's go back. Sorry, I got this um, email from Pat with all of these questions. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go this way. It's easier for me to see it. It's easier for me to see it because I get Oh, we got a new one. Oh, that's me live on YouTube. <laughs> Patrick, don't laugh. I told Patrick to review this later uh, when he's at home. Uh, so we we made the rollover on cap. We caught, commented on that, the fixed pop button, how to upholster outside, determining yardage. I did a, I did a YouTube on determining yardage. And I think that was a recent one. And this, And they say, this is a great help. Thank you. I really appreciate these comments, you guys. It just keeps us going, you know. And then we have one about how to upholster 1860 antique chair part two spring placement. Um, you and me are equals three. I like that uh, tag. Great tutorial. I'm learning so much from you. God bless you for sharing, for sharing your knowledge. I really appreciate that comment. This is one of the best. How to upholster 1860 is on YouTube. You guys should check it out. And I, I always thought it was because we, we, we had time. And I wish I had time to do a historical background on every piece of furniture I have. And I wish Patrick had time to do the, the proper thumbnails. And because in this video, we had time for both of those. He did a good thumbnail, but he did we, we did some good historical research and we have other things in there that show the origins of the chair, the history of the chair, which is kind of unusual to find that, you know, it's 
a lot of times um, we don't see any names or anything inside a piece of furniture. Most of the times you don't. So it's heavy research that you have to do in order to weed through that. So let's just catch up in the comments. We lost sound again. So Randy said, so soft batting would be caught in day crime, et cetera. Thank you, Randy. And Randy, if you can, we lost the sound again, but I'm just going to keep going. Uh, if you guys could just update me and encourage me if the sound comes back, even if it's intermittent, let me know so that I can continue. Um, I'm going to, maybe what I should do is go to more some visuals. Um, I'm going to go to a visual. I want to show people just in case they can't hear me. Um, this is the thumbnail for the 1860s chair. So I'm going to try to get more visual for you guys. So that, you see what Patrick did? That, the can, that's from Kansas City. He's got, the, he's, <laughs> he's got the whole building. I don't know how he does this, you guys. Um, so this says, following along on your wonderful videos on this chair. Thank you very much. Um, and you guys are just going to have to tolerate the uh, intermittent, I guess, at this point. You're back. Great. Thank you, Deborah. Keep that encouragement. I, I'm going to try to do more visuals. Following along on your wonderful videos on this chair. But help. The second video, can someone send me a link to it? So I am not sure, whoops, I am not sure, well, let me just show you the, again, the, the thumbnail on that, on that video. Um, I'm not sure where that is. I know it's in there somewhere, but you know what's happened now is we have so many, I'm hearing most of it, thanks, Pamela. We have so many videos now, I think we've lost track. We've been doing it for 10 years, and uh, every once in a while I'll say to Patrick, maybe we should go back and edit um, some of the videos that we did in the beginning because I, I think if you've seen me before you guys you know that we started youtube 10 years ago and i can tell you and if you guys remember youtube 10 years ago is kind of a still kind of a skateboard goofy you know kid thing you know that's how i looked at it fun for the kids but not not very um not taken very seriously but that has completely changed completely I think people go to YouTube for a lot, including me now. I go, I go to fix. I tried to fix a uh, a dishwasher at home. Uh, looking at YouTube um, was somewhat successful. I think uh, beyond me now. I have to call a technician. Helen says hello again. If you need to use a wool barrier cloth, would you use Daycon too? Is she now? Is Helen? Are you the one that's been asking about the? This is important, Helen. You're the one that's been asking about the tutting. Where are you? Well, how come I can't see Helen's other comments? Isn't that weird? I can't. Let me just scroll up, maybe. I'm doing the best I can, you guys, with this. I can't see her other comment. Where is she? Helen, could you please would you confirm you do four-way tie? No, she's asking about a four-way tie. I wanted to make sure. Um, Helen, hello. She says, yes. Hello again. Would you use a wool barrier cloth? You never use Daycron over horsehair, even if it's covered in muslin. You have to use cotton. And cotton is kind of tricky to use when you're tufting. Um, so what I would recommend is that you use only a half a, half a layer of cotton, not a full layer. So and, and try not to use a fabric that has a real rough backing or a heavy fat, really heavy fabric. Uh, because what, what you're going to find is the, the cotton kind of sticks to the back. So it gets a little tough to do that. Um, the reason you don't want to use um, Daycron is because I learned this the hard way. Uh, Daycron, um, the horse hair comes through eventually, and it, it doesn't look pretty. It, it looks like you've got an adolescent uh, piece of furniture. <laughs> Sorry. But it, it doesn't look good at all. It really doesn't. Uh, so you cut cotton, um, take it can't uh, cotton is blue enough. If you hold cotton to a light, it's non-porous. If you hold Dacron up to the light, it's porous. So that's the easy answer. Helen is new. Yeah, she is. And thank you, Helen. Thank you, Randy. If you can Randy actually, um, you guys, um, I'm gonna ask Randy to be kind of like Patrick. If he can be answering as much as possible for me, because Randy is out in Wisconsin. He he is a good upholsterer. I've seen some of his work, he's always, uh, he's really been good for us um, as kind of like a go-to person. And I'm going to use him now. So if you guys, uh, I'll ask Randy, feel free to answer 
some of these questions on the comments, okay? This guy's nice enough to do that. <laughs> he's <laughs> like he's got nothing better to do. <laughs> uh, I won't, I'll pretend uh, you, I won't. I won't treat you like Jimmy. So I, I think somebody got. I, I, you know, Jimmy is a good sport. We we have an agreement. I think Jimmy 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 gets his digs in though. He's not a he's not a shrinking violet. But I, I think Jimmy and I really have a good back and forth. And I know sometimes it's a little it goes a little overboard. That's why Patrick is good to be here, kind of kind of as the moderator, if you know what I mean. But he's a good sport, and and um, he has. I was just telling Patrick. I hope Jimmy's listening. I'm not sure if he is because he isn't feeling well. But um, Jimmy, I don't think one the, today he's sick. But during the filming, I can't remember one time when Jimmy didn't show up. He's so reliable, so reliable, and that's so important with filming. If you miss one one film day, we do it every week. So if you miss one film day, it kind of kind of messes your schedule up a little bit. But, but he was always there. He's really good. I mean, I, I can't ask for a better apprentice than Jimmy. Um, I hope it's easy to get out of it. Let's go to the next one. New comment on how great, great video, how to build a slip seat. So we can show you how to build a slip seat. People say slip seats are easy. They really aren't because the reason that slip seats aren't, you, all, you have to use all of the stretching techniques that we teach. Um, so um, the stretching techniques um, are great on a stationary piece, but slip seats move. You, you can't take the slip seat and, and you, you can't anchor it down with a clamp on, on a bench. It's moving on. So you, you actually have to hold. Sometimes you're putting the slip seat underneath your arm. And then, so it isn't as easy as you think it is to do it properly, um, to do it properly. So, so I think we show that on that. We, we, we teach that on that. And then we have another comment. This is great. I love that. I love helping people earn money and make money and supplement income. We hear from people. And one of the reasons we got serious on the YouTube and then this morphed into the online classes and this question and answer is um, we got a comment. I think it was about seven or eight years ago when we, thank God it was when we first started because we didn't continue on the route that we were on. And we, we heard from somebody out near you, Randy, out, out in the Midwest area. Um, and she was a single mother of two children. And she told me that she was supplementing her income based on the videos. And she was learning and, and making um, projects and, and getting paid for the projects and supplementing her income to support her family. And I said to Patrick, I said, you know what? Um, we need to get more serious. We can't be goofing around. I mean, we, we had videos where we had cushions piled up high and... And, um, you know, I pull a string and all the cushions fall on me. And, uh, you know, we had to stop doing that outrageous stuff. We'll save it. We'll save it sometime for the questions and answers. Not that dramatic. But I realized, you know, people are dependent on us. We really did get, and we, we really have so much content now. I think people can use this as a go-to. I, I hope that they use this as a go-to upholstery uh, channel. I really do. Um, I, I really take part in East comments um so he's saying could you show pictures of the pieces you're describing also does the love seat have a separate cushion yeah so, sometimes you know the prep work we do some prep work i mean i this isn't scripted um which uh, you guys you guys try this it's not as easy as it might look but um you know we do the best we can with what we have and sometimes we just have to go you know, Patrick needs a video, okay, you know, like five minutes, I have to think about what he needs and do it. Sometimes we don't always have the props, that's for sure, like today. So we got another one, and um, we have a Monday afternoon entertainment. Thanks, Randy. And Randy's going to ask Helen, check out the comments, Helen, because Randy's going to help you with that other question. So now we have a comment, um, new comment on how to upholstered dining room chair, part four. And this is from Danello. Um, just informative. I like your accent too. You know, it's funny about the Boston accent. About, you wouldn't believe this, you guys, right? It's really something that people like now. But 25 years ago, I was teaching an adult education class. I won't say the community, but let's say it's outside of Boston. 
right outside of Boston, and it begins with a B, and the second letter is R, and the third and fourth are O O K L I N E, <laughs> Brookline. <laughs> but it, it was a great, one of the best adult ed programs at that time. It was one of the first to start recognizing, hey, wait a minute, adults, you know, really like to still learn when they're adults, and we can offer a quality program. And the upholstery, and I'm not, this is no ego involved here, but the upholstery program became the anchor program. And what that means is that there were so many people taking the upholstery program that there was an overflow, and the overflow people would take another program and just another class, and it would just help the overall program. And I was teaching three nights a week there. So there was one class, and you're not going to believe it. It was how to reduce your Boston accent. <laughs> The Boston accent was not something you wanted in a in a in a board meeting uh, somewhere else in the country. You know, you get a job in California, the last thing they want to hear is a Boston accent at that time. But now I think because of that, it's acceptable. Thank goodness, because you know, people would say, "Hey, can you do anything about that accent?" No, I was. <laughs> that takes a long time to acquire that. Uh, So I, I'm starting to like on the comments. I'm gonna. I think this is a good. I have to tell Patrick that this is a good, useful thing where our, our more seasoned people are, are answering questions. And this is what you get on Facebook. If you guys are following along in the comments, if you're watching on the Facebook, I and I'm going to get to the Facebook here. I have to tell you that um, I am thrilled with the Facebook. I I am absolutely thrilled because it, it just it was like I I, I wind it up. And it just went. And and the reason it went because of you guys, because of like people like Daphna and Janine and Pam and, and the, the more seasoned people, Randy, all you guys are active in that. And it's so important for the newbies. It gives them confidence. We're going to get to a newbie question on Facebook that I'm going to be answering. And I answered on Facebook to her because it was so interesting what she wrote as a newbie. Um, and then, you know, there's observations that I, I, I made um so that's good they're helping one another there so let's go to the next one um how uh jane um she says on the she's commenting on the upholstery show an anti macasker is a small cloth placed over the backs arms chairs or the head of a cushion of a sofa to prevent soiling of the print we were talking about this last week Permanent fabric underneath. The name also refers to the cloth flap collar on a sailor shirt or top, used to keep macasta oil off the uniform. So a lot of um, upholstery materials that we use, like it's interesting, it comes from clothing. You know, like cambric was a was a, a, a some type of a lapel that people you be cloth lapel. I think I want to say it was like a bit, but you guys can correct me on that. And how it got from there to underneath furniture, I'll never know. But but that's that's interesting. See, I like the history. We have a few people on Facebook now, like Pam and Daphne, who are really historians. They they like to really dig into this stuff. And Jane, this was this was a this is a gem. I like this. So let's go to the next one. Uh, new comment on fixing grandma. <laughs> so this was um, this was fixing grandma's needlepoint, and the question was from A S C H. Not glue on vintage needlework with the question mark. Uh, you know what? I really don't remember doing this, but I'm going to show you the thumbnail. Well, let's not going to see the video. That would be boring. But I will show you the thumbnail. That Patrick is so creative. Look at that thumbnail that Patrick has with me holding grandma. It wasn't my grandmother's. It's somebody's grandmother's needlepoint, right? And we were rescuing it. I think we were kind of backing on it or something just to rescue it, really. And I'll use anything I can to rescue a piece of needlepoint. So <clears throat> um, you might be wondering why I didn't use Elmer's glue. I'm not sure why I didn't use Elmer's glue. But Elmer's glue is, is, is something that we used to use a lot of um, in my shop that I was working in 40 years ago. Um, so Helen, uh, 
So Helen, um, thank you, Randy. So thank you, Randy, for doing that. So James, you guys check out all those uh, questions and answers between Helen and, and Randy in the comments. And for all, the, I guess everybody who's watching this should have a comment bar. They should be seeing this. So I'm not leaving anybody out. James says, on a Victorian chair, is it okay to put Daycron on top of the calico to improve the crown before top fabric? As long as it's not horsehair, as long as, as long as you're not covering over horsehair, Daycron is fine. So if you want to, sometimes I use Daycron over cotton. You can do that. Um, and, and the thing about Daycron is that Daycron is really cool because as a synthetic, and you could do that on a Victorian chair. Um, and Randy, uh, Randy says cotton over Daycron. Yeah, I think it's easier to get a crown with cotton. As long as, Randy, right, as long as the cotton, you cotton, oh, if it's if it's horsehair, you have to have cotton be right over the horsehair to prevent anything from coming out, I think. Or maybe, you know, if you've caught in some way, I guess it would be okay. That would be okay. So let's go to the next one. You to the French set T. Oh, this should be interesting. This is Janine. Hello, Janine. Janine uh, is from overseas. So she watches this later. She's been, <laughs> she's been great. Uh, she's really been great. And she says she's on the French set T. You guys have to, have to check out the French set T. There's so much information in there. Um, I think you guys would really like it. Even you guys who have maybe been a little bit further along on their bolstering, um, this is what we're hearing, some really good things about this. Um, this is phase two, as Patrick calls it. It's less than seven through 10, burlap and edge roll and more. And here's a, and Janine says, very exciting. Going to watch Next Step right now. And I thank you, Janine, for being, I think she's one of, here's the YouTube, you guys. Oh. If you haven't seen it, Patrick's, that's Patrick's work, his graphics. I hope that you can see some of this. See, Jimmy? Thank you to Patrick. I could never have done this without my son. Believe me, you guys, I would have just uh, maybe a posted for another 10 years if I'm lucky and then poof, gone. None of this and all this information would have been gone, you know, and, that, and that's that's what I think about the, the upholsters that taught me. Um, that a lot of the, I, I retain as much information as I could from them. But, um, you know, it's true in any trade, really, or um, artist or mathematician or anything that lived a hundred years ago and they didn't write things down or they couldn't write everything that they knew down it's gone forever i think this is one of the wonderful things about youtube i can't believe how youtube has morphed into this wonderful like time capsule type thing you know and it, it just we can retain information and and you people can use it for forever and hopefully um and so it's not, that's exciting. That's why we continue. Those things really keep us going, really do. And then I think that we we, we went through all the YouTube. Let's go now back to Patrick has sent me the Facebook. I'm kind of excited about the Facebook. Um, so Randy is still doing a good job answering people for me, and I appreciate the comments. You guys are getting a double... Uh, a double show, really, with Randy answering comments or, or anybody else that wants to, uh, who is more seasoned and you're talking to newbies. This is kind of like what you would get on the Facebook forum. You know, and I'm, I'm always surprised that people who watch me on YouTube don't, or they watch me on YouTube, don't know about the online classes and don't know about the uh, Broadway Poultry School uh, forum on Facebook. And then you have people who are just doing the uh, Facebook and they don't hear about the other two. And 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 I don't think anybody's just gone to the online classes and not heard about the other thing because they that's a process, I think. But um, use all three. I mean, and if you and if you're just starting out, like I said, you don't want to spend a lot of money. You don't have to. Upholstery is great that way. You only need a, a heated garage or a place to work, and home tools will get you started in this business. Needed. I mean the tools. Watch this, you guys. Look at the tools that I have listed here. 
I, I purposely started out this basic with just tools that you have at home. Anybody can have this at home. And even if you just want to get the digital on this online at Upholstery on Broadway, get the digital and, and you have everything else. Get an ottoman. You don't even have to buy the ottoman. I mean, I think um, if you're just reupholstering an ottoman, you can skip all these steps and go right to the upholstered part. And I, I show you great detail how to put the fabric on. So use this as a tool. This is, that's what it was designed for. You know, another upholster would say, oh, he's just, uh, you know, he only used five springs on, a, on an ottoman and we should have used nine or he should have used an ottoman. You know, I use five because it's one of the easiest arrays, the spring arrangement is the easiest for an eight-way tie. So a lot of what I do in the beginning, um, you know, just uh, if you are if you are seasoned, if you've been upholstered in a long time, just, and, and you like the channel, just bear with me, because you will get other information on the online classes that have been a little bit more advanced. And I'm gonna show you something that's a little bit more advanced if I have time uh, behind me. Uh, I just wanna catch up. Randy, uh, I just stripped the knee like chair. Randy, keep up, keep going, man. You're, you're really helping me. I appreciate it. I'm going to go to that on the cuff, on the fly. I thought, hey, Randy. Randy is from Wisconsin. He has a shop in Wisconsin, by the way. I'm going to plug Randy a little bit because he's helping out so much. Check out Randy if you're in the area. Um, Randy, I forgot. You, I, I give you permission to use the name of your shop. Oh, oh let me let me get, let me think. Esquire, is that it? Um, you can put your, I'll give you permission to put your name, your company's name, and also where you are, um, your location, whatever you want. If you want, you can do that. I give you permission. I know that you wouldn't do that normally, but because you're helping out today, that's your reward. Hopefully you'll get some business from this. Um, let's just go to the primary. Let's go to Patrick. Where are you, Patrick? Where did you, where did you go? Oh, you know what? Let's go right to here. Let's go up. This is from Pam, and Pam is listening, I think. Pam, I got your chairs up there. Finishing updating these chairs last week. Let's just show you these. Beautiful, beautiful job. Pam has Pam has really advanced her, her skill, even in the time, little time that I've known her. She's really, um, really good, I can tell. Um, and, you know, some of these little side chairs, they look easy, but they're not. Esquire upholstery and... I want to say, I almost said, <laughs> Randy, it looked like Cuddly, Wisconsin. Is that, I know that that's not, that's not it. <laughs> cuddly, Wisconsin. This should be a Cuddly, Wisconsin. As a matter of fact, this should be a Cuddly, Massachusetts. I think I would live in it. I need a little cuddling sometimes. I know you do too, Randy, right? Patrick, at this point, if he was sitting here, would say, get back to the Facebook. Or he would say, is that a toast? Just to get it back, you know. That's what happens when you get old. And Daphna, I don't know if Daphna's on here. Are you on there, Daphna? I can't see. But anyhow, she's got a really good, um, she's always good at, at these comments. And she's a good writer and a good historian. She really is. And she's got the full package. Uh, Daphna says, I've been having a lot of difficulty using my Maestro Number 7 hand stapler on wing chairs. The staples distort when the wood is hard and they don't do well with ply grip. I really have to push, by the way, I use that hand stapler. Sometimes Jimmy likes using it. Um, I think on one of the classes he was using that exclusively. So sometimes I use that myself, but I'll switch back and forth. It's good to have both of them. Uh, but the, the hand staple is really good for beginners who have small projects and um, who want to just get going on it, on the kind of like they don't want to spend a lot of money. It's, it's, they don't have to listen to a compressor. Um, and uh, Jimmy is still good. Um, I mean, Randy, I called you Jimmy, Randy. <laughs> Randy's the new Jimmy. <laughs> and then, so she goes on, Daphne goes on. Um, I really have to push hard and that's tricky on top of the metal and they often bend or distort. It's a time for me to admit that I need an air stapler and compressor. Now just to, give you background on Daphna. She's really, she's a newbie, but she's been like, I, I think she's done like six or seven or eight different pieces. And I think she just completed the wing chair, which is just remarkable. She is a really quick study. 
Um, I think she's got some crossover skills. I know she does. I think she mentioned it, but I can't remember. I was thinking of getting a BEA number seven air tech, but I have no clue what compressor to get. You're going to get a lot. Of, she's got nine comments since I commented the first time out of California. She's going to get a lot of comments on them. Now, this is on Facebook. So she's going to get a lot of comments on this because every we have there's a lot of different air compressors out there. I would stay away from the loud ones. They're no good. They're too loud. And no matter where you put it, you can hear it. The California, what I like about the California is that it's 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 a low, um, it doesn't make that much noise. Uh, some of them are really quiet, uh, but but um, stay away from the, the, the box store compressors usually. Well, I think, though, if I'm not mistaken, Home Depot started carrying the California compressors because of this. P.S. I won't be logging in on the live question and answer money, but I'll watch to see what Kevin recommends. So she's not on. So she answered that question. I answered that question. So now let's go to Facebook form two. This is from Sarah. Now Sarah has a long comment. You guys have to bear with me here. A long. This is this looks. I haven't seen this yet. So uh, Lucas. Hey, hi everyone. So we got Lucas. Now you remind us, Lucas, where you're from. I remember. I think you're from Belgium. So we have people from Belgium, from England, from Australia, late or not right now, uh, been busy with restoration projects. Lucas started, Belgium, yes. Lucas started, you guys, with us. Um, I think he was a newbie, and he has, like, he's produced some unbelievable work. And you guys have to check check out old Facebook postings, I think, if you want. Just go to Lucas's page and see some of the, he, he's tackled some really hard mid-century furniture, by the way. Look at that. I have two of these in the shop, that cobalt blue mid-century furniture. It needs to be upholstered, unfortunately. I wouldn't have touched that fabric if it wasn't all cut up and everything and, and worn. I think there were two chairs in a house in, in near me in Massachusetts, and uh, the woman bought the house, and the, the people, she asked, are you going to do anything with those chairs? The chairs came with the house, and she, isn't that interesting? So the chairs are going to be upholstered and used in the house that she bought. And she, and Lucas is a nice guy. He says he misses the kind words and he missed you guys a ton. Just to let you know, if you're just following, we usually have more help in the studio. Jimmy's usually here. I can bounce off of Patrick and Michaela are usually here. They're, they're adding content. So I hope I'm doing all, you know, I'm using, I'm using some prop, but it's not a usual class. So let me get, let me get to this. So Sarah, Sarah, I think, to the Facebook, I haven't posted anything. I have worked on it in the past, but I wanted to share my first project, a little history and the treasures of upholstery in, a, in parentheses in this piece. I had always been curious about upholstery and restoration, but never made time for it. After casually mentioning this interest to a friend, he gave me an East Lake Power set that needed a little work, also in parentheses. He dropped off the set on my porch. The next day, my husband and I went to move the love seat to the basement. I had already watched the Treasures of Upholstery video on the YouTube, and I'll have to say the video, that video did not prepare me for what treasure I was about to find in that love seat. And a drum roll, a drum roll, right, you guys? I wonder what she found. Uh, um, I've, I have already watched the Treasures of Upholstery video on YouTube, and I'll have to say that video did not prepare me for the treasure. No golden coins fell out, and no iPhone. A skunk. A live skunk. How we rudely woke up to the picking up, picking up this couch. How yeah. <laughs> I never ran so fast in my life. <laughs> she found a live skunk in, in the in the East Lake sofa. We didn't get sprayed, so that's a plus. Sarah, this this is a fabulous story. Eventually, we moved the love seat, not the skunk, into the basement. The videos on YouTube help. We built some confidence on at least starting this project. <laughs> a skunk of all the animals. I mean, a squirrel, um, something. But you know, squirrels can be can be vicious. I um, before I go on, I have a squirrel story told to me by a policeman. He he went. Um, he got they got a call that there was a squirrel loose in the house, and he he went into the house and was met by a very pretty woman. And her husband was there. It looked like they had fired up for a romantic evening. And, and this uh, 
had ventured into the house and, and uh, she asked if he could remove the squirrel. And I guess she was very pretty. Uh, usually they don't do that, but he said, well, <laughs> maybe in his mind, he says, I'll, I'll do it because she's pretty, which was a mistake. So he went up into the attic. It was up in the attic. It had, it had ran through the attic and he, he went up this little ladder up, up through the, through the you know, hole in the, in the, you know, that little thing pulled down trap door. And he said he had his flashlight and he was looking around up there and all of a sudden he, he, the squirrel appeared in his, in his vision and he fell on his partner because he told the partner later, it, it looked like it was a dinosaur. The squirrel looked like it was 10 feet tall. <laughs> Suppose if you, had, you got a flashlight on and it's right next to you, which it was. So he fell, the squirrel fell down on top of, on top of his chest, ran downstairs ran into the fireplace, got its tail caught on fire, didn't, by the way, the, the animal was okay, ran underneath the sofa, caught the sofa on fire. <laughs> and meanwhile, the guy, the man, he, he fell and, and he hit his nose and his nose was all bloody and the police came down, the sofa's on fire, he's got a bloody nose. And, and he said, can you guys please leave now? They put the fire out. <laughs> But that's my animal story. Everybody has an animal story when it comes to upholstered furniture. But I, it wasn't my story. I stole it. She's got a good story with the skunk. Let's get back to this. Sorry. I did get a little dead mouse. Uh, Deborah found a dead mouse. Anyone else having trouble with the connection? Yeah, we, we were. I hope that we get in some of this or, or most of it. Eventually, we moved the love seat, not the skunk, into the basement. Um, then she goes on, the frame completely fell apart when the fabric came off, rotted webbing and, and 18 springs to be retied, no staples, only, only spit tags, which is probably a blessing to take apart. A friend who gave this to me mentioned so many times that he just loved the carvings on this love seat. I decided I would fix it up and give it to him. I could tell that he really connected to this furniture. She is a darling. Imagine you guys, the work. You guys have to see this. So well, let's, let's do one at a time here. I can. That's the skunk East Lake chair. Look at that. That thing is a mess. And usually East Lake is of all pieces to get, really. And then um, I'll show you the after. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And she did that all based on the YouTube channel and my videos. And I'm so honored, you know, that somebody that somebody's able to learn through those. You know, when you think about it. Um, we don't have three-dimensional technology. I always thought that when we did, that, that would be fabulous. Maybe someday we will. But this is all, you know, TV screens, and people are still being able to do this. It just goes to show you how creative you guys are and how good you guys are. So let's just catch up on some comments. We need to hear yes, we use it. Randy's still asked, answering questions. And thank you, Randy. Uh, let's go to the next. Uh, I think we have another. Yep. Yeah. No, I think that was about it on Facebook. I might be missing something. If I am, I apologize. Um, but I, I do want to get um, to the to the wing chair behind me, and I want to show you. So because Jimmy isn't here, I, I've been I started this project. Um, I cut the fabric out. But you guys have seen videos where I've cut fabric. Out. I just want to make sure that you guys see this. So when I cut a piece of fabric out. I have four piles left over. One, two, three, four piles. I, I don't take what I've cut and throw them in one pile. And then I'm, I'm left you know, going through them to see you know, what I need next. So what I do is I break it up. I usually I put, by the way, this has been stripped down to a point where it's ready to be reupholstered. Um, and I, I take each cover off separately and then upholster it. That, there's a method to that. That's the reason why I do that. But I want to talk about the fabric. So the fabric's been cut and I've sewn a lot and I'll show you that in a minute. But first, I take all my insides and I put it back, all my insides, the inside uh, arms, the inside wing, the inside back, the seat, the deck, and I cut it and it's all sewn and I put it on the chair. I have my, my cushion cut oversized, the top and the bottom. I have my boxing cut to size and have my welting already sewn and I put that I don't have the cushion for this. This is the cushion for the, it's just a cushion, which reminds me that all that fabric that's on there is for the cushion. 
and that's lost. I don't worry about that. And then I have my outsides over here on this on this piece. So you have to make sure that your shop is clean enough to do this and people aren't coming in on you and moving things. This is a big problem. You wanna make sure that when you have your piles, you need to separate them and you need to be aware where, they're, where they are at all times. And then, very important, I have the extra fabric. And a lot of times, my extra fabric, right, Randy? My extra fabric is a long piece of fabric which I've used to cut my welt up. People say, why don't you do a bias cut on the, on the um, fabric? Here's a little secret. Most upholstery fabrics, Randy, and you guys can test this out. Most upholstery fabrics do not have to be cut in the bias. The advantage to that is if you're careful cutting and you're leaving a big long piece on the end of the fabric that you could get, I got all my piping and there's a lot, there's a big area too to cover the cushion, go all the way around the cushion, all around the, around the base. If you have um, enough of a piece like this left over, you can do your welting without any seams. That's really important. So um, now, do you have to cut some fabrics on the bias? Yes, but I would say it's a very low percentage of upholstery fabric. Yeah, here's the reason why people are so hung up on bias cuts. Because we had a huge gap in the learning in, in, in upholstery with, with people going into the business and a lot of information got lost. And to fill in, a lot of people who filled in were people who used to do slip covers. So people who do slip covers were big on, you have to bias cut a lot of slip cover fabric and a lot of slip covers to get it to lay properly. It's almost like a dress. When they cut, they cut a dresses on the bias. You girls would know that, right? For it to fall. And so when they crossed over, a lot of people, they filled in those gaps from the, from the slip cover people. Right? There were people who used to teach upholstery in the New England area, who were slipcover people, which is fine, but a lot of a lot of the fat, a lot of that information kind of got lost at upholstery fabric, really, unless it's a, a stripe and you want to get a nice uh, on upholstery fabric that's a stripe, for instance, you want to get a, a twill look when you cut it on the bias. That's the only reason you'd cut it on the bias is to get a good look, uh, uh, like a, a an angled on your on your piping. So that's what I do. So let's let's just catch up on the comments. I hopefully Randy has been. Thank you for the info on the on the on the bias, Kevin. It's actually been something for me to think about lately. So I know I know that you guys are hearing most of what I'm saying. So that's good. And and Randy is 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 going uh, great. Thanks, Randy. So I just want to talk a little bit more about this chair. But what do I do on this? I cut all my pieces oversized, like three inches, an inch and a half. Usually it's an inch and a half on each side, and that's for stretching. I cut all my pieces, and then um, on the, uh, let's just move all this and show you what I did here. This is a, a wire edge. What's the difference between a wire edge and a hot edge? Well, on a wire edge, you need to make sure that you tailor the ends. I seam here, right? And I seam on the top so that I don't have to seam here. So I get a clean look over here because when this is sat on, this this goes like so. On a hard edge, you don't have to do this. You can you can uh, usually just have one seam in the back, and then you could do a hand pleat on the front. So um, that's that. Okay, and and then I I cut and then I put my my deck on. Okay. That's that. And then now here, people have been asking about wing chairs and about a wing chair online class. So the thing about the wing chairs, usually what I was I was thinking about this, sometimes the stretching that I show on a basic piece, like that ottoman or slip seat, that's a really basic stretching techniques on on wing chairs you're breaking some rules with the stretching that I show. And, and that's, this is interesting. Uh, now I wanna show you on the wing. This is one of the things that people really don't think about. You might not be able to see it, but there's a little flare down like this. It's cut that way so that it wraps around the arm. Let me see if I can show you. I'm not sure if you guys are gonna be able to see this. Put this up here and you can see it wraps around. 
it wraps around. And the first two tacks that you put on that, if you pull them, you can pull them tight, is at the welding. That goes against some rules. You know, and people think because it's a fitted, um, a fitted meaning that it has piping, it's already been cut and all that, it's easy, it's not. It's a little, it's a little bit more difficult because it's a little different than what you're used to. If you're just doing a non-pattern or cut pattern piece, you can follow the kind of the same rules of stretching, the basic rules. But when you're doing this, it, 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 it doesn't have the same rules. So the first two tacks you put in, you can pin tack up at the top, but the first two really solid tacks you put in are pulled at the bottom really tight. And then you pull it up to the top, not too tight, it's just a pin tacking. And then you pin tack the front, you feed it through the back, pin tack the back, and then make that back cut. So that's that. And now on the inside arm, so we have we have a little panel arm. Let's get that out. And this is the new one. Get to red red on this because um, you know I think <laughs> I always say if you're doing the seam, you can use any. And if your saw machine is really good, you can use almost any color thread. But this this wasn't the case on this one. I had to use red thread because um, let me just catch up here and make sure. Thoughts on reusing old edge roll? Is it in good shape? Randy's still doing. Randy, thanks a lot. He's going to have to keep keep doing that while I talk. So, um, so the rule. So everything's been cut. Everything's been sewn except for the cushion. And um, so what's going to happen next on this is I'm going to take the fabric off. I'm going to kind of give it a little bit of new life, maybe. It's, this is just a reupholstery job, not a restoration, so I'm not taking it down to the frame. I'll put like a half layer of cotton in there and upholster this. It does have a border that goes along here, just like it did before. That will only get a very, sometimes I like using a half a layer of Daycron border <coughs> because, excuse me for a second, it just gives you a better finish below. Cotton, here's a little tip, you guys. Cotton sometimes leaves little pull marks in areas like this on the bottom. There's a lot of detail here, and you don't want to take uh, the bulk of the Daycron through. You trim your, you trim your Daycron even with this edge. And then I'm going to put a, a base welt on that. And you notice that the manufacturers left little openings here. Those openings, they think, help um, the upholsterer, but I don't think they do. Excuse me for a second. Now, on uh, Jimmy's class, he did an Ottoman class. If you guys have got the online class and you and you bought his class, um, you, you'll see what happens around him. Tip of the day, you guys. You're going to put another, you could get a scrap weld. I keep scrap weld in the shop, single weld. And you're going to put it right along here like this. Let's say this is the scrap. Just in this area. And you're going to put it on like so. You're going to leave a little, if, if you want to be precise, some guys like to have measurements. Five sixteenths, okay? That's that's the size of the well, uh, I think. Five thirty second. That was a five sixteenths. Uh, let's, let's just say a quarter inch, okay? About a, a quarter of an inch open like that. You'd staple your flange down. And then your piping, when you put your piping on this way, you cut the flange out, and it kind of nestles in there really nice. And if you really want to see the detail on that, it's, it's too hard to show you here. Jimmy's class, when he does the ottoman, it made all the difference in the world on that ottoman because that was a manufactured ottoman, and we had a couple of challenges with that. And you will on manufactured furniture because, you know, a lot of manufacturers aren't thinking about reupholstery upholsterers when, they're, when they put something together. So you have to come up with little solutions like that in order to make something look good. Okay, so... The inside back on this one is, that's the only thing, right, that doesn't have any welding, and that's just put on normally, and that your regular stretching exercises work on the insides. So the outsides on this, just to show you, let me just catch up on my comments. <laughs> Randy, thank you for that. Uh, Randy, I might, I, might use you, <laughs> I might use you from now on on that, if you don't mind. Um, so I'm going to put these, I don't want to, I don't want to, lose myself with, I want to make sure I keep all my insides together. And then I'm going to go to my outsides. 
this is the cushion. We're not going to do the cushion. We're just going to go to the outsides. Where's my outsides? What do I do here? These are my outsides. See what I did, you guys? I'm going to take this. Get rid of this from now on. And my cushion over here with all my pieces. I want you to show, show that. That's my cushion pieces right there. We did the inside, the insides, which I have on the floor over here, right? That extra piece over there, I usually keep separate. I always have to remind myself which, which is which. It just helps me. And then I got my outsides in my hand, okay? And now I'm going to turn this around, turn this sideways. Okay, and I'm going to show you that I've got my, you might be wondering, this is my outside back. That's pretty straightforward. Let's just do that. It's outside back, right? And then I have my piping. I've already determined how I want to do my back by piping. I'm going to, I don't usually do this, but on this one here I did. I like to change it up sometimes. Randy knows what I'm talking about, but I have the piping goes all the way to the wing. It goes all the way across the back, like so, look. All the way down the other wing and stapled underneath here. And then I have two pieces, and look what I do. Look at the little technique that I use so that things don't get lost. I keep them on one string of piping. See that break right there? That's for the, That's going to go down here, outside the outside back like this, and there's my other outside back. Well, see that? That's a little helpful tip. When you guys get busy and Mrs. Smith's looking for her furniture, and Mr. Mr. whatever his name is, he's looking for his furniture, these little tips just give you a little bit more uh, speed. That's what you're looking for sometimes. That's when you get good, right? And then I have my outside on look, I got it marked on the top and on the back of the fabric. And I hop on that. You watch those videos with Jimmy. Boy, am I drilling that into his head. And sometimes he forgets I come over and he's got the outside on written on a corner or he's got it written on the bottom. And then I have to review it with him. And this is what helps you if you got it, Check out the online classes if you haven't. Um, buy one and see what we're doing. We're, we're really trying to develop good habits. And, you know, it might look simple, but you'd be surprised at, at how this can, you know, you can mis mistranslate. This could be translated wrong. Even even sometimes I can make a mistake or, the, or, the, or this wears out. Um, this chalk that we use also, that's another point is a special chalk, it's more of a powdered chalk, and, and it doesn't go through and it doesn't stay in the fabric. But I don't put it on the front side of the fabric, some people do. I don't, don't get in that habit, I always do the back side. Anyhow, so that's the outside arm, and that's the outside wing. I made the decision, the executive decision, to put my to separate the outside wing. Some, you can make the decision to make this all one piece, but you know, you're gonna use a lot of fabric to do that. It's a lot of wasted fabric. And if you have a straight piece of line here like so, sometimes you have to do it in one because you don't have this wood here. And then you, you guys have to decide, you can look at the old, Daphne does a good, a good thing. She takes all her patterns off and just as a reference, which is a good idea. But if you don't have that, if you just have a frame and you're wondering, if you don't have this wood down here, you have to do this all in one piece. And that's a little harder to do than separating it out. And you're gonna waste a little fabric. So make sure you get enough fabric. So I think that's it, man. I've run out of things to say today. I've run out of props. And I wanna thank Randy. I'm just gonna check my comments um, before I sign off. Size, uh, it's just the perfect size, so I'd love to reuse it. And Randy, thank you so much, Randy, for for continuing to answer these questions. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be signing off in a minute. I just wanna make sure that you get everybody answered here. Um, I just wanna read, if you guys somehow aren't getting the comments, Randy's been doing a really good job at answering things. And I agree with most of what Randy, what Randy says. Uh, Allison was asking Randy, uh, just noticing that you suggested one inch foam for the East Lake. I typically use two inch. So, so you have, you know, the thing I like about my trade is that um, you can, upholsters are different in this, in their ingredients, just like a chef, just like chefs are, just like a fine chef is. So uh, the thing is, you want to make sure that it ends up looking good, right? And looking, um, I, I think scale, 
uh, proportions are really important in upholstery. Um, so, so, so as long as it ends up and, and, and you don't have anything like horse hair coming through and you've used the proper, most of the proper materials, I think it's fine. Lucas says, thanks again, Kevin, for everything. Super good to see you again. Good luck for the rest of the week. Thank you. And you too, Lucas. I hope things are going well in Belgium. Randy says, I build my seats, rubberized horse hair cotton and center one inch foam and maybe one or two layers of cotton. That's good. And the horse is the tra is in the trash, but I may dig it out. What's the worst that could happen? A skunk, I suppose. <laughs> so just to let you know, Allison, horse hair cost me for 15 pounds of horse hair costs. Oh man, hold on a second. I think I charge five to six hundred dollars for that Brit new horse hair. So um, Allison says, thanks, Randy, and I'm going to sign off. And I really thank you guys for being patient with me today. This was a big test for me to do everything uh, myself, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.